Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. I like to care for different plant species, propagate them, and share my experience with you here on YouTube. So if you're into that kind of videos, please do consider subscribing to my channel and send this video a like. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the orchid care, propagation, and rebloom. Uh, first of all, if I don't notice, orchids are one of the most uh, grown cultivated orchids around the world and they have been selective br selectively bred and hybridized so that they are easy to grow, they are forgiving and they will flower often. So any plant that you will get in nurseries or supermarkets are probably going to be very easy to care for. Phalaenopsis orchids actually come in a variety of colors, shapes and sizes. So there's one for everybody, there's no excuse for you not to get one. So Phalaenopsis orchids in nature are actually grown uh, on trees. So their roots will attach to the trees and the leaves will actually grow uh, one way, like, uh, like they open up towards the sun. So it grows kind of outwards like that. And this is really important for you to know when you're planting this plant, when you're growing this plant, uh, is that you have to face the leaves to the direction of the sunlight. If you face this the other way, the, leaf, the, the plant is not going to get uh, sunlight or proper amounts of sunlight at least. And when they do that in nature, it's also a defense mechanism because uh, when your leaves are sideways, when water gets uh, on you, the water will just trickle off and instead of pulling in the middle of exactly where the, the leaves meet because these plants are very, very prone to rot. So let me quickly talk about the sunlight, which is that they like medium to bright indirect light with a little bit of morning direct sunlight would encourage them to grow faster, but it's not required. And if you put them in too bright of direct sunlight, the leaves will burn. And if you put them in too low of a light, sometimes the leaf will just yellow up and fall off. And the, the new leaves are just going to grow super slow for you. It may not even flower for you at all. In terms of watering, what we discussed before is that this plant really needs to dry out really fast. So when you're outdoors and indoors, the care is very different. I actually brought this plant in from indoors. Uh, this plant lives in my nursery and I watered it. I'm going to show how I water my, all my nursery plants later. But when I moved it indoors because it was flowering about a month ago, I have to water it completely differently, which I'm going to show you in a, in a bit too. So I kept this in a cash pot here. And there's actually, I'm not going to lift it up now because I only got one hand. There's a little bit of water down here, only like this level of water. So that any water can be wicked up to the top. However, when you have leka, the top parts sometimes tend to be a bit dry. So I have this trusted bottle right here. And I would sometimes miss it. As you can see, uh, when orchids uh, are thirsty, you can actually tell from the roots. Their roots become this silvery uh, color. And this is actually, I, I read that it's a symbiotic relationship. It's actually fungi that's lived with the roots. Um, so yeah, when you spray this down, it will turn into a darker green color and that's when you know that the roots are well fed. So when kept indoors, I don't try to get the leaves wet at all because there's no airflow here. Uh, it, it may rot the plant. So I just get the roots a little bit wet, but then they need to dry out again uh, very quickly. They cannot be sitting in water. So I just spray the top with a little bit of water and that's it. And I do that every meal, breakfast, lunch, dinner, because I sit right here. This is my seat. We're all social distancing now, so we're all sitting at opposite ends of the table. Oh, and I forgot to mention that I actually add a little bit of fertilizer, uh, orchid fertilizer in here, because orchids do need the feed in order for them to push out those blooms. Uh, so just make sure you feed your orchid regularly, but keep it dilute, so do not over fertilize your orchids. Uh, they do like to be frequently watered, but they need a really quick drying out period. So they have to dry out within minutes. Uh, so if you're outdoors, of course, I would just hose them down whenever I walk by it. It's not a problem, but when you're indoors, do not get the leaves wet because um, they're very prone to bacteria and fungus and rot again. And when you're indoors, sometimes the leaves will stay wet for hours on end. So keep that in mind. Uh, they are heavy feeders. You do need to fertilize your orchids in order for them to keep pushing out these beautiful leaves, beautiful leathery green thick leaves, and to give you your flowers, of course. And orchid fertilizer is different from other fertilizers. I'm gonna show you that at the end of the video, how I fertilize my orchids. But yeah, you do need to fertilize them. And orchids are particularly uh, pest-free, at least in my experience, correct me if I'm wrong. I didn't use, to use any pesticide on my orchids and they're fine. Although lately I do put a little bit of pesticide into my fertilizer mix 
just in case, just because I can. So they're very, very easy plants in that manner. And in terms of fungus and rot, as I mentioned before, they are very susceptible to that. So I do add fungicide to my fertilizer spray as well. So yeah, orchids are really easy to care for as long as you follow the guidelines. You know what they're like in their natural habitat and you try to replicate that in your home. And the last key that I want to touch on is good airflow. And I believe that it will help the plant if it's got really good airflow around the leaves and around the roots because they do take in some of the nutrients from the air as aptophytes and airflow is going to help prevent uh, rot and fungus on the plants. Um, this particular plant, again, it uh, re-blooms, so I'm going to quickly show you how I do that. So as you can see here, this is actually the previous uh, bloom spike and I just cut it off right here, right uh, above a node that was not used, so the flower was actually above that and it started giving me uh, this flower spike right here really beautiful it took like a month to completely unfurl very beautiful i took uh, this plant in for my nursery about yeah about a month ago actually so it's been living in here it's completely fine with the transition indoors oh, pretty and it's also given me a secondary spike that's from a completely different uh, side of the leaves and this is going to give me four flower buds really beautiful so my fellow Nopsis orchid lives uh, on the shelf it's actually got two sides so it's getting uh, light from this side of the shelf and also this side of the shelf and as you can see we have paranets up there so it's getting uh, bright indirect light but some part of this plant here actually gets a little bit of direct sunlight in the afternoon because the sun is uh, this way right now in December but that's going to change in six months time but it seems to tolerate the little bit of direct sunlight just fine and as you can see i have many of these and these are actually supposed to be thrown away by my parents they just bought these for chinese new year i have three more over here so yeah i saved them i moved them into leka just leka it's very easy to move them and yeah they have been thriving here the leaves are growing like crazy so uh with Phalaenopsis orchids, the plant of the health, the, the health of the plant is not in the flower, guys. It's in the leaves and in the roots. So when they have grown, you know, this is actually a new leaf. If they keep growing leaves and the roots are growing, they will get bigger and bigger and the flower will become more and more pr uh, pronounced. So just keep in mind when you're buying orchids, do not look at the flowers, but look at the uh, leaves and the roots. Okay, so as you can see there, uh, this plant actually can tolerate very, very frequent or crazy watering, but they do need to be dry out completely between watering very, very quickly. They need to dry out within minutes because they're very, very prone to rot and bacteria and you will also drown them. So this is why we put them in leka and or you can use horticulture horticultural charcoal or pine bark that's really really thick and chunky they can also live in that so when you're visiting an orchid nursery you'll see these uh, hard water hard water stains but this is actually usually fungicide so they leave a mark on the leaves but they do wash off after a while in the rain or you can actually wipe them off fairly easily so no worries about that and this one's actually putting out a new root here this is actually a root and also putting out a flower there you go nice yeah so i did uh, leave the previous flower spike on as you can see this one is dried off and this one i'm not sure what happened to it i think this is bloomed twice for me probably i just cut it off right here so again if you are encouraging a secondary spike you can leave the spike on and just keep these uh, two nodes because these will either give you a keiki, which is a baby orchid, or it'll give you another um, secondary bloom coming out of this. However, uh, if you cut it off at the base, this, will, this plant will still give you another or uh, flowering from a different spike. It will put out a whole new spike. And I hear that if you do that, the new spike will take a lot longer, but it will give you bigger and showier flowers. So yeah, that's how you um, encourage treat uh, orchids after they orchid spikes after they have bloomed in the future i think i will just cut it off because in the past that's what i did i left it on because i don't mind it if it takes its own time as long as the blooms are bigger and more bustier 
Here's actually a baby orchid. This came from a keiki. So orchids are propagated by offsets, which is keikis, or by seed. So I'm going to show you a clip um, of what I shot before in the past of this plant when it was just born. Here we have a Phalaenopsis orchid that's given me a keiki. A keiki is basically another orchid that is grown instead of a flower on the flower spike. How beautiful, it looks like a flying angel, a flying fairy, a flying bird, <laughs> however you want to interpret it. So it's been like this for about a few months and the roots are getting longer and longer. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna liberate her. I'm gonna let her, see if we can take that off, yeah. Nice. So she's gonna go into her own pot and grow into a beautiful uh, orchid, orchid lady. <laughs> so that is this plant now. This is the update. Uh, I believe this is probably about six months since I took it, took it off the parent plant. And it's just turning into its own plant. It's really beautiful. <laughs> it's gonna take probably uh, one to two years, I, I believe, before it starts flowering. So here's how I water the orchids every day. It just kind of holds them down. Uh, actually, I do this whenever I pass by this area or especially if it's a sunny day, I'll just hold it down. Make sure that it's thorough, that it gets on uh, the leaves, the roots, and anything in between. And this is, these are actually orchids too. This is or orchid too. It's super satisfying. Watering orchids is my favorite part of the day. So, yeah. And I, I make sure to go around the other side and spray it from the other side, but I'm not going to do that right now. Here I'm going to show you how I mix my orchid fertilizer. So first of all, this is the fertilizer that I got. It's not sponsored and there are many other brands. I don't know why I have this. This is just what I have happened to buy online in this pandemic. It's got Chinese words on it. I'm not sure what words even made. But uh, orchids, they require a different sets of nutrients from your common house plants. They have a lot of uh, ma micronutrients that are a little bit different and geared towards uh, encouraging to bloom. And this is how I mix my orchid fertilizer. I eyeball it. That's it. I'm, I don't, I'm not the kind of person to measure anything. Uh, and I'm, I don't know, I'm just not that kind of person. When I'm cooking, when I'm mixing my potting mix, I never ever measure. Um, I believe that everything should be stress-free and we should just use our common sense I always under fertilize, just so you know, I fr fertilize frequently, but in tiny amounts. And I use actually a little bit of pesticide here. This is a Curacron. Uh, just a tiny bit. You're supposed to use this in the evening, so you don't burn your leaves, but I've always used it in the morning because I'm too lazy. Um, but neem oil, you should never, that's, that's neem oil right there. You should never use neem oil in the daytime because I've burned plants by using them in daylight. And here's the fungicide here. This is what gives them that residue after you uh, water them. It leaves, it stays on the leaves and it looks like hard water stain. And just pour a little bit on it. And then, voila. As I spray this, uh, as you can see, it becomes very, very mixed up in there. So I don't really even have to mix it anymore. It, yeah, and I, only, I know that I only need half a, half a thing, half a sprayer, because I don't have that many orchids. Okay, and I'm just spraying them down, feeding them, that's it. This is all you need to do. Uh, I do this every week or so, or if I remember, sometimes I don't do it for a whole month if I'm busy. They're very forgiving, but Orchids do respond very well to fertilizer. They will grow better, faster, stronger. They will flower more. And I can definitely tell that uh, because when I'm fertilizing, I notice a significant change in, in, uh, in their growth. This is a vanilla orchid. Yeah, I'm gonna go around and finish fertilizing my other orchids since I already have this in my hand. <laughs> Bye. Oh, I forgot an important point. When you uh, fertilize the orchids, you do want to get the leaves and the roots wet. That's where they absorb the nutrients. But if you have any flowering flowers, you don't want to get that wet with uh, fertilizer and with pesticide. You want to leave the flower alone.
All right, so I hope that that was very clear that you guys are more confident in caring for your orchids and encouraging reblooms. Uh, I hope that you guys are staying safe. I'm at botanist on Instagram. If you want to DM me or any questions regarding plant care and propagation, I'll try my best to get back to you. Meanwhile, do take care and stay safe. I will see you in the next video. Bye.